Hey folks, welcome to Geometry Nodes 101. In this final session on the 101 series, we're going to be having a look at creating a little field. So we're going to be doing displacement. We're going to be doing instancing from a collection. And we'll also be doing a little bit of vertex weight painting to get in some variation in our ground foliage and rocks and things. So let's jump into it. I have here just a nice empty scene. And I'm going to just go ahead and add a plane, which I will scale up. Uh, maybe 10 times. So it's 20 meters by 20 meters. I'm going to apply that scale, tap into edit mode, control E and subdivide. And then we can just set this cuts up to maybe 30. Just to give me enough resolution for painting later. We will do additional subdivisions in the node tree for the displacement. Okay. And now we've said that, let's jump in, add a new geometry nodes modifier. And I'm going to be first of all, just doing a mesh subdivision surface, just to give me a few more polys and we can tweak the levels later as we work through. Now, I want to do displacement. I'm going to show you the kind of longhand method for doing this. For a plane, it doesn't matter. You could just do it in the z-axis, but just so that we're all kind of on the same page about how to do normal displacement, let's show that. So we want to move the points, so we're going to use a set position node. Right, set position allows you to either use the input, the position input, to set an explicit position, or use the offset, which is going to essentially add this vector to the current position. So this is like offsetting the position relative to the current position, whereas the first socket is for explicitly defining a position. So we are interested in the offset in this case, because we're just wanting to move the surface. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually add a texture. So let's add a noise texture. You could add something like Musgrave or Voronoi, whatever you want to do to make your surface look good. If I just plug this in directly, like color into there, then you can see that something is going on, but obviously color is going in like, so RGB gets red is X, Y, and Z. So we're getting different transforms in all sorts of directions. And you can see that we no longer have straight edges on here because things are being pulled around. So let's do this properly. Let's add an input a normal node. And the normal is just the vector with length one out 90 degrees from the surface. And we're going to multiply this by the noise. So for this, we're going to use a vector, vector math node, set to scale, plug in the fact, which is just a zero to one range from our noise texture, and plug that into our offset. So everything's moved up now. And if you're used to the displacement modifier, you'll know that there's also two other settings. We have mid level and strength. So to get our mid level, we need to subtract a value from our noise texture. So let's grab a utility math node. We're going to change this over to subtract. And subtracting 0.5 basically means that the mid level is 0.5. And you can see that there. If I get rid of that, you can see it's at zero and then bring it back, it comes in. Now the next one we're going to do is just multiply. So mid level first, and then you multiply. So with this one, now that it's centered around zero, when we do our multiplication, you can see that that is just working properly like that. That is literally all you have to do to do displacement. And this is proper displacement. You know, this is in the normal direction from your surface with a control for mid-level and strength. So that's how you can set that up nicely. If you wanted to control the position of this noise texture, then you could use a, an input position node and a vector, vector math node. So you can just join these up like so, and then you can, you know, move this around. If you do have my toolkit, then you'll also find that in the mapping section, there is a mapping node, which is just like the one for the shaders where you have things like rotation, translation, and scale. And actually, if you do have my toolkit, then you will also have in the utilities a, uh, a noise displace option. So this is already, this is like a node group set up already for you to be able to do noise displacement. There's also a couple of other displacement nodes in the toolkit. All right, so that is our basic setup. Let's tweak a few values here. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so we have a bit more space. And if you want this to be smooth shading, you're going to need to get your mesh set shade smooth and just drop that on. If you want a specific material on here, you just need to grab your material, set material, and then you can select a material in here. I'm not actually going to do actually either of these because we're going to be using grass. And when I use grass, I like to make sure that it is dense enough that you do not see the floor. If you go outside, you can't see the mud on the floor. You will only see grass, right? Grass is always very dense. I'm going to be using grass from Botanic. 
either use one of your favorite add-ons. I recommend GScatter if you are looking for a free foliage add-on. 0.4 has just come out, so there's a new update for GScatter. I'm just going to grab grass in here. Let's grab a couple of these. And I will grab several because I want to show you how to instance from a collection. So I'm going to grab a few different ones of these. There we go. I've got my grass. I'm also going to be adding some flowers, which I will get from GScatter. There we go. Assets. So if I look at these, cool. So I have my dandelions and I have several different grasses, right? I have a collection of grass. I'm going to hide these just so I have my two collections. And let's get about scattering. All right. So I need to scatter points. For this, we're going to use a point distribute points on surface node. That's going to give me this density. And then I want to instance. So I'm going to be using an instance, instance on points node. And I need to select what I'm instancing, which is going to be grass to begin with. So we want a collection info node. Just plug that in like so, and I can select my grass. All right, so far so good. If I have a look at this a little bit closer, we can see that each one of these grass instances, and let me drop the density. You see each one of these is identical. It is all three of my items. I just want to pick one individually. All right, so first of all, we want to separate children. So separate children basically means that each thing in your collection gets picked as a separate object. Because you can do a collection, for example, like if you're making a fence, you might have a collection where you want all of your different things within that collection to be one block, in which case it's very useful to have the option to keep it as one block. For us right now, we want to separate those children. We then also want to reset the children so that we are zeroing out the transforms, as we can see there. And then because at the moment we're picking everything, right, I want to pick a specific instance so we can just select pick instance. Cool. So now we have properly selected from each collection one object per point. So all three tick boxes go on and you're good to go. Next thing I want to do is randomize the rotation and the scale but I want the rotation to also follow my surface normals. So what we do is we take our rotation and we plug it into our rotation. That's all you have to do. <laughs> and now you can see that we have, for example, over here, if I turn that on and off, you'll see that this one goes straight. So the rotation from your distribute points on faces takes into account the normal of your surface that you've distributed on. If I still want to modify this further, I can use a utility, rotate Euler, something like this. And now I can rotate each of these individually in their z-axis. So let's go ahead and use a random value. Let's go and change this to axis angle. We're just rotating in the z-axis. So I can plug this in like so. And our max in this case is going to be tau, which is just 2 pi. Great. So now we have fully randomized z-rotation. Everything is following the surface properly. All looking good. Now let's randomize the scale. So I'm going to use another random value node. Set my min max to 0.8 to 1.2. Just gives me a little bit of variation in there. And I'm going to plug that in. I would like to use a scalar value, a float value, when doing scale on nature assets because I like things to scale proportionally. I don't like things to be super, super narrow and then really long because your eye is just going to pick up that things are being twisted and distorted. Okay, so this is our sort of fundamental setup for how we can set up grass. Now, Density, you're going to go pretty high, right? For grass, it's pretty high. Just while I'm working on this, I'm going to set it to 20. And I'm going to keep plugging my toolkit because it is really useful. There is a node in there called the render switch. Utilities, render switch. Here it is. And it basically lets you set a different density, whether or not you're in render or not. So I can set this to like 20 in the viewport, 100 at render, and I can plug this into my density. Nothing's going to change right now. But if I hit render, it will process that as a density of 100. I can override that to use the render density right now. And you can see that. Okay, I'm going to go back to leaving that as default. And now I want to scatter my dandelions, my flowers. So I'm going to duplicate my distribute on faces and my instance on points. Control Shift D. I am keeping the scale plugged in from below because this is just going to be read as that scale. You know, I can use it just the same. And I do actually need to use a different rotate Euler because I need to come from my distribute up here instead. So plug in my rotation, take my rotate Euler up here. But again, I'm just going to plug in my angle from below. So that's all fine like this, right? Now I'm also going to get rid of my collection info node there. We're just going to pick a single object this time. So use an input object info node, plug in my geometry. I'm going to find my dandelion clump. 
And I've got the Node Wrangler enabled, so Control, Shift, right click and drag is going to give me that join. Awesome. So I can see there's a little bit of an error here. If I look at this, it says realized geometry is not used when pick instances is true. So realized geometry. This is like a whole topic for instances and realization. If we look at our instances menu, there is an option for realizing instances. And this is like make real. If you have an object which has instances and you have control A, you can make instances real. Sometimes you want to keep working with instances. So we have a lot of nodes which deal with instances in here and a lot of other nodes like transform also allow you to use the instances unmodified. Instances generally a lighter weight, right? So if you have pick instances turned off, we can see I have all of these dandelions. Let's get back into solid view. It's way too dense. Let's make this five, right? So I have a lot of dandelions, but it'll probably be a bit faster if I set this to as instance. So it's pulling them in as instances and I pick instance on my instance on point. There we go, right? I can move really easily now compared to before. So it's just something to be aware of, right? If you're using the object info node and you want things to be instances, we can see how laggy this is. In fact, if I play the timeline, we can see this is FPS 7.2. If I turn this onto instances, we have no trouble keeping it 30. Important little tip there. Now I want to paint these in I don't want this to be here all the time. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate my group input. This seems a bit weird. Like, why wouldn't I just join this up? Just because this long noodle is less nice than this short one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure I have a multiplier on here. So I'm going to set this up to five. And now I can go back into my modifier, click on this button next to my density to set that as an attribute. We don't have an attribute yet. I'm just going to call this one group because I know that that is the default name. So I'll just use this in here. So there we go, group. And now select my object, go into weight paint mode, make sure I have my weight on one. And now I can paint where I want these to go. Okay, back into object mode, back into rendered view. And now we can see that we have grass and we have dandelions as we should. Maybe I'll make my grass a bit denser now. There we go. That's kind of it. That's how we can take geometry. We can displace it. We can subdivide it. We can process it through textures. And then we can instance something like grass, whether that be from a collection or from the object info node and have control over that in our scene. Beautiful. It's a really lovely way of working with geometry nodes. I know previously we might be used to working with attributes and for example, defining rotation. On the one hand, you can do that before still, you can just do it in parallel, passing in the rotation, but you can also use the instance rotate instance node you know, I can still rotate these instances afterwards. All right, I'm going to leave this one here. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any further queries. And of course, reach out on Twitter and join the Discord. If you are interested in November, make sure you're on the Discord because we have a lot of people who are very motivated to do well <laughs> with nodes. It's a good place to join, good place to get your like hive mind going. Thanks for tuning in. This is the end of the Geometry Nodes 101 videos. I'll see you in November.